So um, my mom died in February, and she was never wanted to be the center of attention, so we didn't have a, fu a funeral or a memorial service. But she didn't say anything about me not talking in front of several hundred math teachers about how awesome she was. So here we go. My mom was an amazing artist. Right? She started out as an art teacher. She became a professional weaver. And she um, could make wall hangings, experimental things. She dyed her own wool. She made her own patterns. I don't know how much you know about weaving. But here's a book of patterns. And this is what it looks like inside. So all you have to do is make sense of this. And you'll know exactly how to set up your loom and when to run which color in. Piece of cake. And she'd draw stuff. And if you figure it out right, you get beautiful things like pillows or wool rugs, things like that, things that I will, I will treasure till the ends of my day. But she didn't think of herself as doing math. When I was going through her things, starting to, I found a folder of stuff. And in it, uh, this first shot isn't a very good one, but she was uh, designing a quilt that actually has some um, nested triangles in it. And we'll see some better examples. So here are her color versions of it. And then there's what it looks like. It's lots of little bright triangles. And uh, this became the basis for a quilt she made for her grandson, Liam. Um, it's called Snail's Trail. We ate, wrote a problem about it. When we bought a house, she looked and said, oh, you're going to need quilts right about there on the inside. And so the guy who built the house was like, well, I'm not sure how long the, the edge of the triangle is, but I know that for every foot the roof runs this way, it runs 10 inches that way. And she said, oh, that's all I need to know. And she made the quilts, and they fit perfectly. And we just hang out, and it may, really makes our house a home. And you can see both of them in this picture. Um, they're a little bit different. They're really cool. So what does an artist need to do such amazing art? Well, for one, you need tools. Um, you need rulers. Right? She had lots of rulers. The woman owned more protractors and compasses than I did. Right? <laughs> and her carpenter square was way more awesome than mine. Okay. And, um, and you also, you need a calendar from 1994, because what's on the top of that calendar? See the graph paper? You cannot have too much graph paper right? in my house. Right? You can sketch on it. You can draw patterns. You can color things. You can try things out. You can get out the colored pencils and the markers. You can do all of these things. You can write on the backs of envelopes. You can make calculations. I was surrounded by this stuff, but she thought of herself as an artist, not a mathematician. So. Um, I gave her, uh, oh, and she did really cool things. She never touched the computer because you could do it all by hand. So why would you bother? So I gave her this book um, about Escher when it first came out. And she had marked a lot of pages. And one of them was this pattern of olive green and black things that I think she was going to use for some embroidery. Um, she was writing things down and making sense of it and doing her own sketches and traces. She also liked this pattern um, looking at smaller and smaller and how that works. And she made a lot of sketches about that. Though I don't know if she ever made a quilt that was based on that. I don't have pictures of all of her quilts, um, but I see a lot of them. So I found this piece of paper that referred to uh, Celtic page 137. So I pulled out the book of Celtic art on her thing. And, um, and sure enough, there is this picture. And I thought, oh, wait, I, I know that quilt. Right? I found some sketches that she made where she hadn't quite gotten the angles right. But eventually, she duplicated that picture in the sketch. And she made this quilt for her granddaughter, Claire. Right? But remember, she's not a mathematician. Okay? She's an artist. Right? So there's this really cool computer program that came out in the 90s called Kaleidomania. And some of you might remember it. And you can play this cool game called the wallpaper game. And what the goal is is to get the big fish to eat the little fish. And you have to click on the right things to tell the computer whether to rotate or reflect. So I was setting my mom up to do this because I thought it would be fun for her. And before I could even start, she was like, click there. Click there. Click there. She could see everything in a symmetry pattern that, I mean, I'm pretty good at this. She blew me away. She's just like, well, you'd click there and there and there. Of course you would. Why wouldn't you? But yet she didn't think of herself as a mathematician. Her mom, Suzanne's Algebra II teacher, believe it or not, right? her mom was a math teacher. Her brother was an engineer. Her dad was a business teacher. My mom was an artist, just like I, as the mathematician, am the black sheep of an artist family. right? Um, <laughs> But yet, she didn't think of herself as someone who did math, even though she grew up surrounded by math. And in fact, when I was in eighth grade and I took Algebra 1 out of this book, <laughs> my mom said to me, you're on your own. I can't help you anymore. Right? Why is it that intelligent people who are good at sense making and good at problem solving feel no affinity for school mathematics? Right? If our students could do the things that my mom could do, we would be ecstatic. Right? As math educators, we need to figure out and make sure that students understand, and grown-ups, that doing math means a lot of different things, including making incredible, beautiful art. Thank you.